Hello, it's Zara. I have a little bit of a brush haul. I've been talking about getting some new brushes lately, okay? So, turns out I decided to order them from Covered Distributing. It's a, um, a source that I was introduced to because of these little ornaments, remember? So, Chris Hoy is on her Facebook page, Covered Distributing teaches these little ornament classes. So I, sh I shared these with you guys before. So they also, I'm on her Facebook page and it'll, you know, whenever you're scrolling through, sometimes they have sales and stuff like that. So, I mean, it gets your attention. So I saw, and then I went and looked at their brushes and the ones that they sell are the Joe Sonia Sure Touch. So I ordered those. Um, I ordered another Joe Sonia this is a Sure Touch Oval Dry Brush. And I also ordered Chris's own brushes that she uses when she paints. So I was, I think I got these previously when I was doing the ornaments. And then the last order, because I ordered this pattern packet. So I'm gonna be painting this haunted house. Here's a bigger picture. Now, Chris is a very different style painter than I am. But I'm gonna try this in my style. I ordered the piece, and it's so cool because the little critters that are inside the windows, you can paint them on the back part, and then when you glue it together, they'll peek through. So, I don't know, that type of stuff, that's the part about decorative painting that I've always loved too, is that it's usually on something functional. Like you generally paint, you don't just paint a canvas, you paint it on a piece of wood that you can use in your home. So. Um, I mean, yeah, this is decorative. It's for Halloween, but um, still. So let me, you know what I want to do is just look real quick at, okay. So the brushes that she has listed to paint this Haunted Mansion are the ones that I actually had bought already. The Script Liner, the five number five Radical Round. Let's see. Yep, that's the number five. I think I bought them as a set. The, um the script liner and then this is the little oh and I got it says her spectacular stencil set I only got one and I used it last night I was playing with it this is the number five of her stencil set because these are not cheap brushes okay I mean I'm sure it has to do with the artist is putting their name on them so they definitely want them to be a good quality so they really go all out and make a good quality brush um, so it's a quarter inch angle, a three fourths inch angle, a filbert, a flat, and an oval wash. So I have those or things that I can definitely use that are like those. So I went ahead and let me just tell you the price. Like I know this was 10 bucks for her stencil brush and it's pretty big. So I don't know that I'll be using this one to stencil because it depends. Like I don't really even see... I don't think I saw a stencil as part of the, um, let's see. I don't see a stencil on here, but I think she uses it to um, erase. Yeah, I don't see a stencil on here. Um, she uses it not to erase, to <laughs> dry brush. I, was, I looked at the mono eraser because I did get that. Let me show you that too. I might as well pull it out. So I also saw Chris had this on her um, when I painted the ornament with her. It's just a little tiny eraser. It's by Tombow. I got this on Amazon. And it's very, I use these a lot too. These are just the Pentel uh, click erasers. I use these when I'm just doing my dra drawing. But this evidently takes paint off. I don't know, but I'm going to, you know, I have it. Um... I did get something else recently too, and I don't remember what it was. But anyway, so as for brushes, I want to just share. The stencil brush I know was at least 10 bucks. Let's see. Okay, the angle brushes, I got three different sizes. And you guys, I've tried them, and I love them. I am very, 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 I would recommend these. Now, they're not the cheapest brushes. So the stencil brush was $9.75. The quarter inch angle, 608. The 3 eighths inch angle, 712. 
and 868 for the half inch. So I mean all told 45 bucks for um, the haunted mansion mansion bundle. So I mean and all these brushes. So 50 bucks, you know. Um, and I wanted to treat myself. I and you guys helped me by watching my videos. I did make about 200 bucks last month, and I don't often make that much. Like I don't post enough videos, but when you monetize your videos, you can make a little bit of money. So I decided to treat myself, like I said. I wanted to talk about this, the angle brush, because you know I float, and so if you guys want a good angle, I would, I will definitely recommend this. This is, um, I want to show you my favorite angle brush right now, and these are the American Painters that I got from um, AC Moore, which my AC Moore is closed now, but I have a couple. So here's a half inch, and here's a half inch. And let's just look, compare. The reason I like the American Painter is because it has a long bristle. The bristles are long. That means that I have a lot more area for water to be stored up in the, up in the bristle, right? Very similar size this way, girth-wise. And the bristles are so soft and lovely. So I'm thinking this is going to be my new favorite and I will be glad to spend the price because I mean I want to say this was probably half the price um, and I always use a coupon too so that's the difference right I mean if you can get a better quality brush why not but this was doing the job for me for a long time so but I am very happy so I got it in in three different sizes because sometimes you need to get into smaller areas and I overload my brush. So I got those three different size angle brushes. The other thing, I got the stencil brush from Chris too. And this is all from Cupboard Distributing because she sells other brands as well. I got this Josonia Sure Touch. It's the same brand as that. But this is a dry brush. And it's different. My dry brushes have always been, I'm going to grab them. This is my little specialty brush bin. This is what I use, a scumbler. I think you call it a scumbler. This is Debbie Cole's dry brush blending, and she does, um, and I love Debbie's work as well. But now they're going into a different style. It's a flat. It's a actually like a cat's tongue, or they call it a filbert. And this is more of a stencil with a rounded top to it. And I like this brush a lot. Like I've, I managed to get a good... Uh, dry brush with it. So I'm curious because I'm going to be taking two other classes. Uh, well, actually one class. I'm only taking one class by Liz, Lizbeth Stoll, her name is. And she does dry brushing and she recommends these. So this is the same style and I had never seen this, you guys. And I've been doing decorative painting for years, but because I'm watching my Facebook video, not, yeah, my Facebook stuff, a lot of decorative painters are getting online and you're able to see the tools that they use. These are actually at Michael's. So I went real quick and got, and they happen to have three different sizes. So now I have a half inch, a quarter inch, a three eighths inch, and a number four, but they're all, see how they're different sizes? They're all flats, though, with a little bit of a stiff bristle. So it's a very, although the Debbie Cole version is still a stiff bristle, too, because dry brushing, you just want to get the very remnants of the paint. You don't want wet paint. You want it's dry, right? So um, I'm so excited to try these. And like I said, Lizbeth uses this type of brush to dry brush. So I just figured, now these, I don't have my receipt but they're much cheaper. I got them at Michael's. I don't, oh, I, there's a 20% off coupon this month, so I definitely use that, which helps. But I wanna say this was probably six, four, three. You know what I mean? Like they, they're not as expensive because they're, um, they're Princeton. They have this blue handle and they're sticky because there was a sticker. I didn't take it off this one yet, but they're sticky, so I got those. And then this is just your good old number four um, for when I do one stroke um, leaves. It's a filbert, so it's just a synthetic filbert. And I got that at Michael's. And then this is a number three round. You can't go wrong with a number three round. Like it's your go-to perfect size for base coating small things, for all types of stuff. Um, so I just wanted to get a fresh one of those as well. 
Um, and then the other, so here, and this is just, okay, that's the dry brush as well. And then these are just the ones that Chris recommended. Two really good liners. She calls them scripts, epic script liners. But they're 18 slash zero, so you can get a really little line. And they're staying together so nice. So right now, I got two of them because I beat my brushes up. Um, I don't know how much they were. I want to say... I would assume around four dollars each um, so I got two of those and this is her um, radical round this is a number five round so I have a, num a good number three and a number five and I use this on the ornaments to fill in where did I put those little buggers this little part of her ornaments was just like a stroke you just went and you filled these in with this round so it's Chris specifically she has she does a lot of stenciling and stuff like that but um, she's a one and done girl which I love because I'm impatient and I'm a fast painter too so that is my haul I just wanted to share those things also I will tell you Maxine's mop is another one of my go-to brushes I've had other mop brushes but this is a bit different it's got a little bit of a firmer bristle to it too and you can push the water and the paint around a little bit I, I would recommend these um, the oval wash brush I think they keep mentioning an oval wash brush it's like a big filbert it has a rounded but I use this for varnish I don't know what kind it's I've had it forever it's a royal um, lang nickel I think a three fourth inch big flat brush but the bristles are so soft and I get a really nice um, finish when I do um, varnishing so you need something to varnish with but other than that you need a liner around some flats definitely some flats this is all my flats I organized my brushes the other day so all these are flats and I use these to base coat so you're going to need some big ones to do the whole thing, like when I'm base coating my whole mansion. But then you're going to need little ones to be able to base coat your little individual things, like if you have a fence or whatever it is, you know. So I have a whole bunch of those. And pretty much I don't really have a favorite per se. I mean, I haven't. Maybe I'll try some of the Joe Sonia ones. But I tend to really load up my brush when I base coat. So... I do, I'm pretty abusive. I'm pretty abusive with them. Some of these watercolor brushes have lasted the longest. These are simply Simmons, but I think they're watercolor brushes and they hold a lot of paint. That's why I like them. But I have all different, this is just a really cheesy craft smart brush, but it's for base coating. Um, here's a little bit of a nicer brush, low Cornell, low Cornell. So I probably treated myself. This is a wash brush and a wash brush. But it's because it holds a lot of water. Um, so if you want to do a background, you can really put a lot of water in here and it covers a larger surface. So you're going to need a few big brushes too. Um, I have a big angle by Low Cornell as well because if I want to float bigger. So I have a couple bigger angle brushes that I just have. These are some of my angles and rounds. This little angle is good too. Royal Majestic. That held up for a long time. And then these are my specialty brushes. Like I said, the Debbie Cole um, Scumbler. I call it a Scumbler. I don't know why. That's just in my head. Um, and I have them in a couple different sizes. I have these are my favorite for um, pouncing. It's called a Stippler. And this is Debbie Mitchell. See, every, people who do the technique a lot have asked brush companies to make a brush that they like because they do the technique a lot. So stippling is when you want to make snow or soft looking, I don't know, but I these work for me. So I have them in every size. Um, I have a deer foot, which that's when you want to do bushes and things like that. It's kind of shaped like a little hoof. And this one is low Cornell, but it's kind of beat up, but I love this brush. Um, and rakes. Of course you need your combs and your rakes because that's what you need for a beard. I have lots of different sizes of those. And this one's a bit different. I don't know what it's called, but it's not quite a rake. It has a little bit of a thicker. 
but these have all very fine tip hairs at the top so you can get those Santa beards looking good. Oh, I even have a little tiny Debbie Cole one. Um, so anyway, I, I went through my brushes and I got, oh, this is a good rake too. Oh, this is called a comb, but it's very similar. See, it's at the end, it has very fine bristles at the end to make beards. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. I am going to be painting quite a bit coming up. Um, October is a couple days away is National Painting Month, which I did not know. So I think I'm going to be coming back with other painting videos just to teach you guys a little bit about, maybe I'll do a, a history about decorative painting, how it all got started, things like that. And um, I will share my projects with you as well and anything that I learn that I can pass on. But that's it for today, you guys. Um, I will link in the description, maybe I won't link them, but I will list the brushes that I got, all right? And I will put a, li a link to CD, or Chris, let's see, CD Wood, it's called, CD Wood, and um, Cover Distributing, it's distributing. Um, but meanwhile, happy crafting, thanks for watching.